Hello, everyone, and welcome to We're Young But Just Us. Uh, my name is Kyle Doctor. I'm your host today. Of course, We're Young But Just Us is part of the Sports Opinions Podcast Network, a podcast where you can catch us on all the fun apps, YouTube, Speaker, iTunes. Uh, iTunes isn't a thing. I think it's Apple Music and Spotify. Uh, today, I welcome on, which I've been excited to do for a while now, which he's finally ready to talk about, is my friend Kyle Spano, who is the writer of an upcoming book, uh, comic book called Navok Saga. It is an indie book about to be uh, published or uh, printed through Alterna, and it's going to be in the shops uh, come the summer after all this shenanigans is done, uh, and we're printing comics again. So we talk about the Navok saga and its influences around it, the artwork, and just everything regarding the book and why you should buy it. Uh, in addition, we talk about him, Kyle himself, his influences, why he wanted to be a comic writer, and of course, the coronavirus and its impact on the comic industry, specifically his through his knowledge of his dad, who runs a comic shop, the comic player in Southern New Jersey. And we close it out with some fun talk about what is the best comics of 2020 and what so far and what he's liking. So uh, sit back, wash your hands, and enjoy the show. Swing drive, right center field. The Braves have won it. Elliott starts right, cuts it upfield, touchdown down. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it, as I said, is episode 10 of the We're Young But Just, po- We're Young but Just Us podcast. Uh, today, I'm excited to have, I'll basically summarize him as one of my brother's best friends, but I'm also, <laughs> I can't say he's not one of my friends as well. He is a, uh, I, best way to put it is he's just a simple creator. He is on all around the short, short films, music videos, and this, an upcoming comic book called The Navox Saga, The Navox Saga through uh, his personal productions called Flamber Productions. And here he is, Kyle Spano. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, Kyle. Thank you for having <laughs> me on here. And I'm doing pretty good. All right, awesome. So uh, basically, you, you've been, we've been talking about this for people that don't know. Obviously, it's pretty unknown because uh, we didn't, I didn't, he didn't want me to reveal anything about it. He's been talking to me about this since, I think, maybe December before. The, not December, because I was home for that. Uh, so definitely before December. Before I got home for winter break so this has been in the works for a while and he's pleased to announce and we're pleased to announce that he is eventually coming out I think he said as his last Facebook post that the uh, issue one is on the coloring stages and it's almost done ready for production so uh, is that true it's almost ready to come out so uh, yeah we're finishing up the flats for the coloring and then we just have to do shading and we're going to touch up the cover a little bit, but other than that, it's just a matter of sending the files out and getting it printed and then putting it out there. So it's close. It's It's been a long process since, since we've been working on this since last year, and uh, we've we've come pretty far. So basically, yeah, why not? Just tell us what you know. Tell uh, the audience, basically, or tell myself like I don't uh, – like, like if I didn't know, but basically the audience, like what is the Navox saga? Like, w- yeah, what is it? So the Navox Saga, it's a it's set in a dark fantasy world, and I'll just I'll just give you the simple pitch. So Navok, a respected lord and honorable warrior, loses his family, morals, and humanity as he ascends to godhood. Witness Navok's end as a god in the beginning of his saga, along with tales of gods and heroes. So you get this personal story of Navok and. It's kind of an anthology as well because with each um, uh, issue, there's short stories at the end. Some of them will be like one-offs. They'll be like four or eight pages, and some of them will continue in a, a couple of issues. And they'll just expand on the world itself. So the first issue, it's a pretty dark issue. We start at uh, pretty much the ending of the story. We show Nabok in his god form, and he's just – he's lost it all at that point, and – after you read the first story, it after you read the first main story, it leads into what's going to happen in the second issue. But before that, you get a a short four page story, and it has a comedic tone to kind of set off the really dark tone you got before to show you that this world isn't just about darkness. There's funny things do happen. There's joy here and there, but the main world is dark fantasy. 
But you said anthology. Does that mean uh, Navok is there's more characters other than Navok that might take the center stage? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Like in the short stories that I'd say are more anthology based, Navok's not the main character, and I I'm not gonna have him in any of those. He might be mentioned, but he's far from the main character in those. And so I basically, so you're talking about dark fantasy, a lot of fantasy aspects. I know from knowing you a long time, you're big. Uh, <laughs> I think, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I, it was just you and my brother going at it together with Game of Thrones. I know you're into it. And I knew you're into a lot of fantasy and old time. <laughs> I know just through long time, like we'll go off on tangents, talking to each other about comic books. I remember this summer, he literally loved the fantasy aspect you're talking about. Oh, the world building of like ancient you know, gods and all that stuff. So what are your influence? Like what is, like what made you want to write the Navox saga? So probably like towards like the end of uh, my high school career, I was, I was just like doing a lot more writing, getting more creative in my freshman year of uh, college, second semester, it, uh, game, the last season of Game of Thrones, I'm watching it and I'm, uh, I believe that I, I forget the name of the episode. I think it was called The Long Night. The episode that everyone said it was too dark, but there's a scene in it. And um, um, uh, Ramin Dijuwadi had this incredible piece of music. I'm just watching it, and something just clicked with me. And right there, I'm like, I want to make a, a fantasy movie. So I'm putting together this universe, and I'm like, you know, there's not enough to base it off of. I need to expand it more. And next thing, I know I have the entire timeline planned out, different um, uh, races, uh, different cultures, all these all these components coming together. And I'm like, why do I want to write a feature-length movie that's not going to get made for a while when I can do a comic that will let me do whatever I want? I just have to find an artist that I can work with. And it just snowballed to there. So I have a plan for a film. And the original comic idea changed. Because the comic that more the Navox saga, it would take takes place after the theoretical movie. So there's there's a lot of um, um <laughs> planning for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a lot going on. Who is your artist? Um, um, Angel. He he. I met him in a uh, college my freshman year. We we're in TV film history together. We we're talking about comics and artwork at one time and. We, we it just really clicked and I was friends with him but we weren't like uh super good friends we didn't talk all the time in sophomore sophomore year this year last semester I'm like I want to make a comic and I message him on Instagram if he'd be interested in doing artwork and he's like uh yeah give me give me like uh the tell me what's going on in the world give me the pitch and I'm typing all this stuff on Instagram as I'm buying a sandwich and I'm uh the uh, dining hall on campus and he's like all right i'm interested let's meet up let's talk about this we talk about this and then boom he's doing the artwork and i'm giving him uh all the stuff i have on characters then he's like asking questions i'm like well i didn't write this out but i know this so let me write all this stuff out for him and everything just like kind of ju it just happens i'm just like i want to do this and then it happens is there, uh, well, before I get into this question, I thought of this one. Uh, is there, like, stuff you've changed? Basically, you've seen his art style and his work. It's like, damn, I should change this to match up with his style and, like, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mean, when we would, like, uh, when I, like, break down certain aspects of the lore and the world for him, he would, like, make suggestions, like, oh, we could do this. I'm like, yeah, no, that that works. So we, it's, def it's definitely been a collaborative uh, process. And the way I'd explain it, I'd say it's my story, his artwork, and it's our comic book because the story and the artwork comes together and it becomes a, a brand new piece. It's our, it's our own original piece now. And is he taking all, he do, is he taking all aspects of it? Uh, of course, obviously pencils, but like inks and colors too? Oh, yeah. He's doing everything. Uh, pencils, inks, colors, and um, uh, lettering. He's doing wow, lettering too. Wow. <laughs> he's a jack of all trades. I like it. Yeah, I mean, for the first issue, he's doing everything, but for the second issue, I'm going to find uh, another colorer just so we can streamline the process, and I'm also working with uh, another artist. Oh, yeah, so I, I didn't say I'm uh, Angel's full name, Angel Falcon, but I'm working with another artist who's doing um, uh, the one of the shorts we have planned out, Chris Rosas. I went to high school with him. And he's doing a, he's doing a story that revolves around the gods and it kind of it has a little bit of do with uh, Navok 
and as you get through the main series, that story will make more sense and it foreshadows certain elements. So we're going to need one of those comic book herald uh, reading orders when this comes out. <laughs> this short story goes here. All right, so back to Angel, though. Uh, like, when you look at his art, and so just to describe it to the audience for your upcoming book, Nabok Saga, how, like, when you look at his art and uh, the finishes, what artists come to mind? It's like, damn, he was influenced by this, and I could see this in his work. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. When I've, I've, I've actually, like, asked Angel about this. What kind of, like, artists influence your work? He doesn't, he's read comics and stuff, but he doesn't really come from a comic book background, strictly. And, like, he's, he's, like, it's a lot of indie stuff for him. I'll be honest, I don't really follow too many artists. I mostly, like, follow the writers, and it's, like, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I just don't follow okay. art too much. All right. And then, might as well, hey. Come, uh, come full circle. Like, what works specifically for you when coming up with these scripts and uh, writing the Navox Saga? It was like it influenced for you and maybe your style about coming about this. Oh, I'd say definitely. I'm um, a uh, Neil Gaiman and uh, Garth Ennis. Really, like a specific work from uh, Neil Gaiman has to be the Sandman. I read that on um, uh, freshman year of college. I Bought all, I found some lot on eBay, bought all of the issues, and I'm just like, wow, this is this is great. I wanna I wanna do something now. And I just say how like the lettering in that was really influential on me because it wasn't just like your typical comics where they do um dialogue. There's all there's a lot of captions that are used in the Sandman to convey the story, and that's not really typical in comics. Well, it's a lot more typical now, but back then it really wasn't, and it's still isn't for a lot of books but it's you you see it a lot more now and just like the different fonts they used they, they would combine fonts and it wasn't just like one simple font and and all not all the dialogue bubbles or captions had all capital like you see in traditional comics so just how they're doing everything unorthodox that really inspired me you don't always have to go by the rules if you can do something better or break a rule and get something creative and good out of it, then you should go for it. All right. So you, I know Neil Gaiman is obviously a lot of fantasy. Garth Ennis, I know you told me all, oh, plenty of times off the record that he's just <laughs> your guy. I mean, I, he's just like on my list. I haven't gotten there yet. I know you've recommended a ton of stuff to me. I know I'm going to get there eventually to talk about Neil. But back to Neil Gaiman specifically, your fantasy. And of course, Nav and it's just a huge thing for you and going, especially with Navox Saga. Like what should like readers like, like, I would not say expect because obviously you're creating your own work, but like, like if they're fans of A or A or X and Y, they'll enjoy the Nabok saga. Like, what would they if they were fans of this property, they would definitely like your work or might like your work. I'd say like if you're a fan of uh the salmon, you'll like my work because the salmon it would they'd go off from the main story and do um uh, just one off stories. So if you like a bunch of different stories expanding the universe you definitely like what I'm doing. I'd say The Last God, which is a newer comic that's being put out by a DC Black Label. And that's a dark fantasy. And it's telling two stories at once, one in the future and one in the past and how they got to the point where they were. That's a limited series. Uh, no, a maxi. It's 12 issues. And that's I enjoy that a lot. I'm currently reading it. I'd say if you like The Witcher, you definitely enjoy my world. It's it can be really dark at times, but it can also be very comedic, similar to The Witcher. If you like Game of Thrones, I'd say definitely check out my book because it's at points it's going to have that political intrigue you see in Game of Thrones and it'll have that um intense violence as well. And I'd say God of War, especially the new God of War, where we see Kratos as in the Norse mythology world, just because I I, mean, I take a lot of inspiration from different myth different mythologies and not just one for the comics. So you'll definitely see stuff from there. And I'd say Navok is similar to Kratos in a certain sense. So if you want to see a, like a different, more Kratos-esque comics, then I'd say the Navok saga is for you because there is only like two God of War comics, one from Dark Horse and one from Wildstorm. 
Hey, Wildstorm, we love Wildstorm. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I got it. Um, so, yeah, I'm really, uh, I've seen Kyle has sent me a, a bunch of scripts when, when he just started. He sent, he's been sending me artwork. I personally, and I've told him I'm not the biggest fantasy guy. I'm more, uh, I'm more of down to earth than a lot of uh, sci-fi. But, uh, you know, even then, I'm, I, even as I'm not the biggest, biggest fantasy guy, I was intrigued by the mythology of it and the God works and potentially just, everything revolving around the fan fantastic nature of uh the gods and the relations to demigods and all that stuff and it really captured my attention and i can't wait for everybody to eventually check it i can't wait to check it out of course i've only seen snippets so i can't wait to see the full book when it comes out so um you know uh you've released some promos can you tell us when you're expecting it to uh be on the shelves i'll be honest with the whole coronavirus that might put us behind but i plan to uh do use the printing program that alterna offers and once i send all my stuff to them all the files for the book and they okay it it should like it should take like three months for them to print it and have it shipped out to me so i'll probably get it in in uh june or july and then from there depending how things are i can start sending it out to stores and I'm also going to be bringing uh, like probably 100 to 200 copies with me to college because I can I know I can sell 200 copies right off the bat and I'll probably save 100 to do shows because I plan to do that also. But and if anyone wants to order online, I'll be offering that service. Awesome. And then, of course, you can check all that out as I'm repeating it at the end of the show. That's on the Flabber Productions uh, uh, social media pages on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, you, I think you guys have a Twitter, right? Yeah, we have a Twitter. I don't really do. We don't really do much with the Twitter just because there wasn't really much traction there. But on Instagram and Facebook, that's where we found the most traction. So we and you have any, oh, sorry. On there. Do you have a website, too? Uh, no, not yet. We are working on that, though. All right. So, yeah, you can definitely expect it. Uh, definitely all, awesome to support some indie comics, especially when they're made by your friends, and I can't wait to see it. Uh, so a little bit more about yourself. Now, you've talked about your creative influences. Of course, you're you just a huge Garth Ennis and Neil Gaiman fan. But like, and, of course, as you can tell, as you reveal, I know some more about your comic history. So why, why comic books for you? I know you do a lot of different media, like to explore a lot of different mediums. Why the, why the comic books? I'd say, so I'm a film major and I'm, I've am i gotten into, I've made short films, I've done music videos and you can like get really creative with them, but there's only so much you can do until budget becomes an issue. And with comics, I can tell fantasy stories, I can tell sci-fi stories, I can tell really whatever I want to do. And the only limitation is the artist. And like, even if you're paying an artist, it's still going to be a lot cheaper than doing a short film if you want to do a sci-fi film or a fantasy film, even just a short film, because you don't have to do costumes, props, and maybe you need a different kind of lighting setup. There's just so much more that goes into the film, the film um, uh, aspects of sci-fi and fantasy. Not to say that not a lot doesn't go into comics, but it's just there's a lot more budget problems. And whereas with comics, it's a lot cheaper for me to do, and I can get it done a lot quicker so I can just keep on putting stuff out there. And you talk, so you talk about, you, I know just from knowing you did a lot of film first and obviously that means if I'm correct, you were exposed to writing uh, uh, screenplays first. Am I correct? Uh, yeah, that's, that's really what my exposure into writing was screenwriting. Yeah. So what was that transition like for you? How was that a really a big challenge or did not so much find that way? find it that way when i like first started out it was a big challenge i wasn't sure if there's like some norm that's used in the industry because each publisher kind of has what they expect and some publishers don't really care as long as you have a script that's able to be read but from talking with people on twitter who are the in the industry what matters is that the artist can understand what the writer's trying to convey so my format it's really similar to a screenplay format which is really which is what a lot of people in the industry base their format off of and some people they'll put images in there to give them references i don't i don't do that i 
write out the script and I don't get too detailed because I want to give the artist some room to put his or her own artistic vision on my writing. And then I'll create separate documents that go over ask, that go over um, um, certain aspects of the script that aren't going to be explained right there, but just to give them an idea. And then I'll do documents where I'll link different images for inspiration, what I think the character should look like and they'll put their own they'll put their own inspiration in there and they'll make something and we'll talk about it but so, oh go ahead sorry no you're good well it, it wasn't too much of a change it just took a little bit of getting used to and figuring out what works for me and the artist all right so yeah well, it's obviously a transition but obviously uh i think a lot of times you look at especially since the old marvel method has basically gone by the wayside and was replaced by people literally scripting comics down. So you're basically coming in at the right time to be transitioning, <laughs> transitioning from film to uh, from uh, your film short films into uh, comics. Am I right? Yeah, no, you're 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 not wrong. It's I feel like just in uh, today's age, a lot more people can break into the comic book industry, and you don't have to do everything super orthodox. You don't have to do a superhero book. You can really do whatever you want to, whatever you want to do. And yeah, that's, it's a really good time to really make anything nowadays because it doesn't have to be orthodox. And it's awesome because, and uh, you're not exploring it early on, is that especially for comics is uh, you can have it funded by the people and sold directly to them. And it's just a great era to write comics because there's so many different formats. And oh yeah, absolutely. yeah, definitely. Not different format. I mean, you've done the two formats, the digital and the hard copy. What I mean is avenues. Like there's so yeah. many different avenues, and it's awesome. And of course, I'll spoil it since you haven't done it. His father <laughs> is a uh, Kyle's father runs a comic shop near Trent, right outside of Trenton, I believe. Um, yeah. And so obviously that's been an influence and he, uh, I know that's what you're doing the first time around is getting him directly into the shops. Cause especially right now we got to be supporting our uh, local comic books. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I, I preach it so much. If you live near a local comic store and it's not like a half hour or so drive and get there, man, just, just go, you, you meet the best people, you expose yourself to some of the best work, uh, especially like maybe, yeah, you'll see your Marvels and your DCs, which are awesome and I'm into but you also get exposed to a lot of indie works that you might not see around the places. And especially shops like uh, pe shop owners like Kyle's dad will basically steer you in the right track. Some awesome stuff that's flying under the radar. Oh yeah, no, ab absolutely. My dad, he's definitely had a big influence on me and a lot of the books I've read, he's, he's pulled stuff for me that I didn't really have an interest in at first, but he's like, trust me, this is good. And I read it. I'm like, all right, this is good. But I think like one of for me, like I didn't do a Kickstarter or anything. I'm funding this on my own for the first issue at least and just getting it into the shops because I feel a lot of indie books, they might they get their first issue off on Kickstarter or their first arc, but then like the second issue or their second arc, it's they have a hard time getting it off because people a lot of people use Kickstarter as a permanent marketplace, which is it's not meant for that. It's meant to get you off the ground so you can get into the industry, whatever, whatever it is you want to do. And if you just stay there, you're never really going to go anywhere because you need to get into the shops because that's where everything happens. If you're not getting your book into a shop, it's, it can, it can go places, but it's going to have a harder time. So, and just since I, since my dad owns a shop and I've been to a good amount of shops, I have those contacts and that's definitely going to help me. But even if you don't, you just go into a shop and if you have a good book and if they say, I'm not really interested, just give them a copy. And I guarantee if it's good and they're like, wow, I like this, they're going to call you back and be like, hey, can I have uh, 10 copies, five copies, however, however many copies, they're going to order something from you. So, you're, yeah, you're talking a lot about getting stuff kickstarted. I've literally, they called the site's called Kickstarter and tell me what it's about. And you're doing it in a way to get yourself exposed to the direct audiences in the comic shop. So basically, you're a. Uh, are you 20 yet? <laughs> I'm sorry, 19 and 20. <laughs> 19, 19. 19. So you're obviously. Uh, I was just trying to get the approximate age. Obviously, sophomore in college. So you're still obviously young, wild, and free in terms of the industry and all that. So what's been like the process for you of like, like with the advice you've been? Obviously, you talk talk about advice and scripting, but mainly submitting stuff and like maybe to the 
not obviously not the Marvel's DCs, but the Dark Horses, the Images, the Boom Studios. What's that been like for you? So I haven't really, um, uh, I haven't submitted anything. I've gotten a lot of the guidelines and I've looked at all the different publishers to see which ones would fit my book. And the main reason I haven't submitted anything is because I want to have the book completely finished. A lot of books, a lot of, I mean, a lot of publishers, they'll allow you to submit the first eight, not the first eight pages, but like any eight pages that are uh, consent, consent, oh, I can't, I can't speak today. <laughs> <laughs> any like, so say you want to submit pages 16 through 24, you can do that, but you can't submit pages 15, 17, 19. They have to be in order so you can do one through eight, nine through uh, 16. And they don't even have to be colored. And I believe a lot of times, they'll tell they'll have they'll either get another artist to do the color work or they'll give you a new creative team in general but they expect you to have a creative team set up and have everything planned out so i want to have it fully done the first issue just so i'd be like i have this done i have a cover done and i have the first arc written out and i'll be do, and obviously i'm going to be doing the thousand copy release of my issue one just to get it out there so i can say i've also did a limited a print a thousand copy print of my first issue and i've sold however many copies and i put it into shops so it's a lot of just showing that you can do this on your own and if you can show them that and you have a good book they're more than likely be like all right we're gonna take your book and i'd say like good places to go to image is uh, one of them a blaze they're a new um uh, publisher they're doing the comic uh kids um the Sumerian uh, and the Queen of the Black Coast, which is a real Conan, it's a mature Conan. And they're doing Gung Ho and they just finished Vampire uh, State, which was really good. The artist from The Walking Dead did that. But I mean, you need to show publishers that you can stand on your own feet and you need to do a lot of your own work and prove yourself to them. That's what it comes down to with publishers, I believe. All right. And Obviously, again, being 19, you got a long way ahead. I think <laughs> hopefully, obviously, getting started now and getting that first issue out there with the creative team is going to be obviously look real good on your portfolio. <laughs> and that's, I really hope for the best for you. And I can't wait for the name act so I got to come out. And honestly, on that note, uh, like, are you rattling around with major future projects? Obviously, they can't talk about but stuff that you're looking to do right now. Or is it all NAVOC all the time right now? Uh, it's, it's not all NAVOC all the time. If it were all NAVOC, good, it would get really boring and my creative uh, energy <laughs> would die down. But no, I have a lot of projects um, planned out. I have a couple mini mini series planned out. And whenever I get like an idea, I write down a pitch. I write down all the different characters, what it's going to be about. One One idea that I'm really passionate about right now is it takes place in uh, the Crusades, and it would be um, a historical fiction. So it's based off stuff that happened, but I'm giving it my own twist. So it's zombies uh, meets the Crusaders. Oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah. So it, it'd probably be like a four or six issue mini series. And I haven't had time to write the scripts out for it because I've just been busy with the Navox stuff. And then I have another idea for uh, a prison. Um, uh, a prison break uh, mini series. It starts out with these prisoners. They break out of prison in the some kind of SWAT teams called it. I'm not sure what team it would be, but I'm still doing research on that. And they would come in and they get trapped in the prison. And it would be like it would have a futuristic feel, so it'd be a little sci-fi. And I got the idea for playing um, a prison escape. I'm like, you know, it'd be cool if I did like a prison break comic. That'd be that'd be sick. And I was just thinking, like, making it, like, overly dark, overly violent. I mean, it would be, like, a, have those uh, Garth Ennis uh, tones, and it would be pretty edgy and just have some uh, comedy that's really out there. So there's, I just have a lot of different ideas, but those are the two uh, side projects that I'm really passionate about when I get a chance. All right, well, that's exciting to hear. That's something I didn't know, kind of, maybe, or it might have been something at 2 a.m. that I kind of <laughs> lost in my mind, but I'm glad to hear that. That's awesome. And so, uh, actually, on that, you talk about miniseries, I did forget to ask, what are your plans for NABOX? Are we talking as long as you can go with it, or do you have a think amount of issues you want to go? So, I know how I know how it's going to end. It's just a matter of figuring out how to get there. I know how, I know I have a point A and a point B, but 
what's in between point A and point B, that's what I think is going to be the interesting part for me and the readers, because when you read issue one, you're like, all right, I know how it's going to end. And it's just a matter of getting there. I could see it. I could see it going to 100 issues. That's what I kind of have planned out. And if I get to do 100 issues, that's cool. And that doesn't even include any, like, mini series or anything. That's just a straight up 100 issues. And I have ideas for mini series Because I'm putting together characters that appear in the main series. And I'm like, yo, mini series on this dude's origin. That'd be so sick. I could do this and do that. I'm like, but wait, I have to finish telling the main story first. <laughs> make it all fit in <laughs> all right so we'll look forward to uh my uh i can't wait to see whenever that comes out my omnibus on the shelf <laughs> my, my name back saga omni all right uh, i gotta go on it no i gotta go god i don't gotta go i mean i gotta go on to a lead a kind of somber topic or kind of not somber, but kind of dis- uh, disappointing nature of the whole COVID-19 uh, standpoint is obviously the state of comics right now. We know that Diamond uh, shut down production. That means uh, uh, LC, uh, local comic stores, your LCSs are going to have a little bit of difficulty remaining open. Uh, can you tell us about your dad shop and how he's like handling it right now and what you're seeing? Yeah, sure. I mean, with my dad, he's he's been in business for the past three decades and his shop's the comic layer by the way all right but comic layer he he doesn't just sell um uh, new books he has um uh your uh, back issues so he has stuff way before the 90s he has he has pretty much everything there from all from indie publishers to marvel to the dc and he sells um, um collectible action figures magic of the gathering and uh gaming dice for D D. he sells a lot of different products so it's def- it's going to hurt him but he has other stuff he can fall back on whereas you see shops there's newer shops a lot of them only have newer stuff and some of them might not have any back issues just the books that come out on Wednesdays those shops are going to get hurt the most and as possible they won't be in business because April I believe there's going to be no new books going to be put out because Diamond is not printing anything and if they just do everything digitally, that's going. That's just going to cause problems when you go back. When you go into May, hopefully books will be coming out in May. But shops, if you want to help your shops, see if they do curbside or they can mail the books out to you. And a lot of shops have um, um shops set up on eBay or they do sites, so you can buy stuff from them. Just recently, I bought um three books from uh, comic shops online. I bought uh, Thor number two and a Bloodshot number two and three. All right. So, yeah, it's a lot of curbside. I think is that obviously New Jersey's kind of gone under a lockdown. Is that what the comic layer is doing? They're doing just curbside? Yeah, they're, he's my dad's just doing curbside and doing mail-in. And he posted something on Facebook. If those two don't work for you, we can try to figure out something that works. So I think that's the case with a lot of shops. They want to do whatever they can to work with the customers. Because if we if they just switch comics to digital, I can guarantee that you're not they're not going to sell as many because a lot of people go to those shops to get the books and talk to the shop owners and buying digital isn't the same thing and maybe they like collecting stuff. I saw it on my uh, Instagram. I was looking at what Bloom had to say and someone commented, "Um, uh, what about physical copies?" And one of the artists that Boom just said, "Um, just buy it digital." And it's like but I want to support my local comic shop. So there's like, there's a big disconnect right now between obviously um Diamond, the distributors, they haven't said anything. They haven't really done much, which is disappointing. They should be taking charge, but there's a disconnect with our artists, writers and shops. And uh, I think it was a couple months ago when the uh, pirating was pirating still big, but there's like a, something sparked it up all over Twitter and everyone's like, Go support your local comic shops because if you do that, you can support your writers and artists also by buying those issues, not the, uh, pirating offline. And now everyone's like, oh, just buy digital. Don't worry about the comic shops. And I don't know. It's sad to see that, but it's also a lot of people are supporting them. So it's it's interesting to see how everyone's kind of taking sides. 
I didn't see it, but every all the artists and uh, writers I follow on Twitter have been amazing at signal boosting all their stores. They've gone a lot, a lot more tweeting than usual about their. I, a lot of the guys, just everyone unanimously that I follow from your Tom Kings to your Donny Cates and all those guys. I've just been shouting out, retweeting. If anybody tags a comic store, they're retweeting and saying they're open and doing stuff. I think they understand a lot of them, and I think they're doing a, uh, as good of a job as they can to show that we need to help out these local comic stores in this time if we can. So, yeah, no, I definitely a lot of people I follow. I follow some of the people you follow as well. They've all been shouting them out. And I think there's – a good majority but then there's just this minority just saying oh just buy digital just buy digital and it just there's a there's definitely a disconnect and it just, it's it's probably like a, a small amount but just that disconnect it it isn't good to have and it's just it comes off as problematic to me it does yeah it's gonna be interesting but even as like I've heard people talk about if Marvel and DC is like the only ones because right now I'm looking, I got a list right in front of me because I want to check. Is that Boom, Dark Horse, uh, and Valiant? I thought I saw Image too, but I get uh, Image is not listed, but it's Boom, Dark Horse, and Valiant have said we're not going to do digital, new digital comics until we can print them. So they've, they've just straight up gone on hiatus. Well, DC and Marvel are probably their big businesses. They're just going to go ahead and go probably digital. I don't see anything else happening. But as you said, I don't think people are going to learn that digital, like in their opinion, will switch to the opinion that digital is better and give up because of this period where some of their comics might go all digital. I feel like you either are or you aren't, and pretty much nothing's going to change that. Like People will be back to the stores theoretically if, in a couple of months when things uh, switch back to print like nobody's gonna go to digital and stay at digital I, like you see that as well right you know i've i've seen people are like well i'll just buy digital for now and then i've also seen people who are like well i'm not gonna buy digital i'll just buy it when it comes on print for me i'm i have a strong principle where like when it comes to my games my comics my movies if i don't have to get a digital i'll get a physical copy of it so you know, the books that I'm reading from Marvel and DC, if they're just going to keep on, if they're going to release some digital, I won't read them until I can get a physical copy. But I mean, I, I feel that way. I mean, I'll buy it digital if I have to at this point, but I love going to the comic store. Yeah, no, I get, I get that. And like, you know, if you have to buy digital just because you want to continue that story, I get that. And then you go pick it up. Um, physical or if you just buy digital anyway, I, I get the why people do what they do. And, I don't know, overall, it's just going to be a really interesting time to see how a period where it's possibly solely digital, how it's going to stand. I mean, as you said, um, um, Dark Horse and Boom, they're not going to they're not gonna do digital until they can do their regular printing schedule. I think it's interesting how it's like a lot of the indie publishers, they have all been taking a stand and... Marvel and DC, from my knowledge at least, haven't really said nothing, and our big distributor Diamond hasn't said anything either. I think, I think that's really interesting and shows you who understands what's who understands the audience in the industry. Because I'm curious how Marvel's going to make money just doing digital, because they make a lot of their money off doing their variant covers. Oh well, well, all books. right. One sec. I do have to say, there's been no announcements. We're just assuming because they we haven't heard anything. Like we, they haven't said anything about their April first and April eighth, either Marvel or DC. So we're. I'm just assuming they're going to go all digital. I mean, I would, assuming, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, but it's definitely going to be interesting since they, Marvel relies on um, uh, variants. They do. They're very strong. They print a million copies of <laughs> their books. They print way too. They print way too many books. I mean, I love. I think I like what Marvel's doing, obviously more than DC right now. But I, I even have to admit that it's just they're crazy about. They print. have too many X Men books out right now. I think the theory is some of those are going to come to an end and get replaced, and I hope so because, ah, oh God, <laughs> there's a lot. <laughs> I'm sticking to whatever says Hickman's on the book, and no, I, I don't, pretty, I don't blame you. Yeah, and I, well, no, I am Marau Marauders and X-Men and Fantastic Four because those books are pretty good. Uh, but 
what was it? Like, I'm kind of disappointed that my collection's getting broken up by this. <laughs> Selfishly, that I have x number nine on my phone digitally, and I don't have it in my drawer with my other I, first date. I, I get that. I get that. <laughs> my um, uh, kid's number one from a blaze, uh, it was on reorder. And now I have to wait for however long till the sends to get it. So I have a number two, but not a number one. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not going to order one because it's coming in. I just don't know when. You know, everyone like quarantine. It's it's been quarantine, but for like us comic book readers, quarantine is really gonna start. It really starts on now when we don't get any new books. <laughs> yeah, but then you're just gonna go back into your back issues, your trades, and oh, dive yeah. into those again. Well, the good news is you still have a lot of trades and back issues to sell if your comic stores are laying open. It's just about them promoting it and all that. Like your dad yeah. said, your dad has a diversity, a uh, wide diversity of items instead of just like the Wednesday comics or halted for now but he has all these trades and all these back issues all these action figures sig uh, and uh statues all that fun stuff so yeah they have diversified so yeah kind of covered the future coming back so we'll end it on a more positive note for the industry uh your 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 2020 so far comic wise and i've talked about this with other people that have come on so far what have been your favorites so far for 2020 for 2020 um I'd say so. Punisher, a Soviet that started um uh, last year, but that's I've been enjoying that a lot. Seeing Garth Ennis back on the Punisher, that's great. I'd say um probably a big book for me 2020 is um uh, the Sumerian and the Queen of the Black Coast, which is a mature Conan. When I say a mature Conan, when uh Marvel adapts Conan, they cut out all the original stuff that's in uh, Robert Howard's novel, so there's no nudity or no nudity anything no foul language it's a uh, very pg and um in a blaze they they go full mature and a blaze almost got sued uh, for doing this book but robert howard stuff is anyone can do it so they won the case against marvel they just had to change the book from uh the title conan to what it is now but i think that book's definitely a big deal because it's showing indie publishers standing up to your titans marvel I'd say another big book for me is uh, Savage Avengers. That's been a great book. I'm excited to see where it goes. Another another good book of 2020, I'd say just really big in general, is Thor. Thor that, has been off to a good start. Yeah, that's, that's, that's an interesting ride because when the first issue came out, from my understanding at least, it didn't really sell well. Then issue two, it, it just sold out quickly i had to order a copy online i paid like 20 dollars for that because it's the first appearance of something but and then issue three and four those sold like crazy and donny cates was doing a lot of books and everyone's like donny cates is doing so many books and some of them are okay and some of them are really good but thor i think that stands out from everything he's done so far and i think it's going to continue to be a great book of 2020 and it's really piecing together the universe he's put together with uh his run on Guardians, his run on Thanos, and his run on uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider and uh, Silver Surfer Black. Yeah, it's been the one. I think I've heard only, like, mad things about Guardians, which he even came out in a Q&A last week and said he is not happy with that book. He was not happy with Guardians at all. Uh, but I, outside of that, everything's been raved. Everybody loves Venom. Absolute Carnage was a hit. And he's like, I. this is where I give the edge to Marvel compared to DC right now is, Marvel has the young superstars right now, I believe. Oh, yeah, Donnie absolutely. Kid, Donnie Cates, Chip Zdarsky, uh, I think Rosenberg has been a real hit lately. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, just that right there, you really can't name much from DC at the moment. And Marvel has the future right now. And it's going to be interesting to see what Donnie Cates does. And, of course, all led by the ringleader right now. It seems that Jonathan Hickman came back to write another – marvel saga which he did which he first did with fantastic four and then the avengers which was crazy but yeah donny cates is the man right now i, I you can't really argue otherwise he is the no, man you, for you marvel can't. yeah he's been doing a great job and do you i know you're more the india do you have i know you talked is uh last god do you that you're only like black label that you've been checking out oh no i read uh, i read a lot of stuff from black label i read all of uh joe hill's hill house hearts that's right the hill house he, yeah you know, he has his short stories at the end of it, but you have to, like, order all of his books to see the short story part one through part whatever. 
So it's like the books are. He doesn't write all of them. There's different art, different um writers and artists on them, but it's like you have to buy all the books to see the full story he's creating in the short story. Those have all been pretty good, but my Sandman Universe stuff. I've been reading that since uh, 2018. That's when it first started, I believe, and that was when it was under um, uh, DC Vertigo. Rest in peace, Vertigo, because we have Black Label now. <laughs> but yeah. The Sandman universe is coming to an end, and it co- all connects back to the original of the Sandman, which is insane. I love it. And yeah, I'm excited. I mean, you talked about it. It's influenced Navok Saga. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm ready for the miniseries that they're doing for the Sandman, and then I'm ready for the Lock and Key and all uh, the Sandman universe miniseries. I'm, you know, despite the whole um, um, a coronavirus thing, it's going to pass, and then we'll get back to reading some great books and physical copies. So You know that. I'm you excited. And, uh, and to finish off the, pl- uh, the, the, the Hill House, you know it's a big deal when for plunge, Joe Hill somehow convinces Stuart Eminem to get out of, come out of retirement to do the art. <laughs> so that must be a big deal. I'm it's excited good. to read Plunge. I haven't read it yet, but... I heard great, great stuff. I've heard great stuff. Not for me, obviously. I'm not the biggest horror person, but I've only been hearing great stuff about it. All right, man. Well, I got to say uh, thank you again. I know... Uh, we're in a tough time right now. You don't know the future of like when exactly Navox Saga is going to come out, but I'm happy to have you on, Kyle. <laughs> Great talking. Thank to you. you. Thank you. Uh, I'm and, we'll be on. And then l- let's do it. Shout out. I know I usually do the socials and everything, but let's shout out like uh, everything about the book information first again, and then your and your socials. Yeah. All right. Um. So check out um uh, the Flammer Productions page. It's literally Flammer Productions, no spaces. That's where I'll be posting stuff about the book. And I did a little thing where I expand upon lore. And if you want to check out my personal where I talk about the book as well, uh, that's it's literally Navok, N-A-E-B-O-K. And then if you want to check out the Facebook page, it's also Flower Productions, uh, two words. And if you want to check out um, our main artist stuff, Angel Falcon, he has some really cool stuff. I'll pull up his account and I'll give that to you. It's a uh, underscore Falco underscore R underscore. So Falco, F-A-L-C-O. And yeah, he has some really nice stuff on there. He hasn't posted anything for the Navox saga just because I want to just keep that all on the Flam Productions page. But his artwork on there, it's really nice. And yeah, check out the Comic Lair on Facebook. That's my dad's shop. And also, I just want to say if there's, if you're looking for stuff to buy issues or anything, just Look up your nearest shop and see if they have curbside service, mail-in or online site, and support them. Because if you if you have the money, just say you want to get into an older um, uh, series, you can, is, this is the perfect time to do that, where you don't have to read newer stuff. But yeah, shout out to all the local comic shops and... Yeah, Thank double you. down on that. So shout if you have your if you swing it, uh, go to your local comic store. And of course, this has been the We're Young with Justice podcast, episode ten, as as part of the Sports Opinion Podcast Network. A podcast you can follow me at at kdoc underscore fifty two on Twitter and the Sports Opinions podcast page at Sports Opinions thirty. And of course, check this out and share it. It's on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Music, YouTube, Spreaker. Uh, I think tune in as well. Um, but it's on all your big stuff. And uh, again, thank you for listening. Uh, as Kyle said, he reset it off it, but I'll say it, make sure it's in the podcast. 2020 is the year of Daybox. So, and make sure you check out his stuff as it comes, I believe, in the summer eventually. All right. Thank you all for listening and have a great one. Stay safe. Wash your hands.